And we're back. Moving back to oxymercuration, demercuration. We put an oxygen, on, the more electronegative atom on the more substituted carbon and the less electronegative mercury on the less substituted carbon. We call that Markovnikov regioselectivity. The two new groups are on opposite sides of the ring. We call that anti-stereoselectivity because there was a backside attack involved. Once again, water is a reactant and the solvent. Reactant, interesting. Reactant. And solvent. Water's everywhere. Uh, mercury to acetate as many ionic compounds are is water soluble. What happens is it ionizes partially as soon as you put it in water and this acetate leaves. So our first step, the acetate's going to leave and we have a short form for acetate that I will show you here. This is acetate. You learned about that a long time ago for the first time. It was one of your ions. Acetate, the uh, short form is AC. That takes you up to the carbonyl. That's acetyl. And the extra O with a minus is after that. So when we did functional group introductions, we learned acetyl. Is a very common prefix in organic chemistry, and that's that part. In the short form we're learning now is AC. Not to be confused with actinium on your periodic table, which you will not see in this course. AC is also the symbol for an element on the table. Okay, acetate was made. What else was made? Uh, mercury. Hmm, I'm gonna draw it down here. Mercury is now a cationic species. And that mercury absolutely loves alkenes. I'm gonna call it a pyophile. Pyophile. I just invented that. Let's see if it catches on. It loves the pi electrons of an alkene. And my alkene is so far away, I'm gonna redraw it down here. I mean, you don't have to. I'll even redraw it and reorient it facing the mercury. Okay. Mercury. Mercury is a very large atom. Its mass is over 200 grams per mole on the periodic table. It doesn't have a lone pair. Unlike making our other triangles, it does not have a lone pair to come back to the more substituted carbon. And yet I see students inventing that lone pair year after year after year. It does not exist. Please don't put it there. There's only one arrow here. One. Two electrons are in an arrow. You remember that, right? The two pi electrons are making a bond to mercury and it is a different kind of bond. Mercury is very, very large. Mercury is just gonna sit there and it is large enough so that it can virtually touch both of the carbons simultaneously. Why can't we use our short form? We learned that short form, let's use it. OAC, right? So here is the deal. Mercury has a partial bond to this carbon and those are not dashes. Those are not dashes. Those are partial bonds and the plus charge is shared by all three atoms. Mercury is big enough to do this. Don't try that with hydrogen, it doesn't happen. 
Mercury is sitting there. Uh, discussion of these partial bonds right here. Three partial bonds. How many electrons were used to make those three partial bonds? These two. Two electrons total. So yes, uh, let's see. To get to two electrons, if you have two thirds of an electron here, two thirds of an electron here, and two thirds of an electron here, that's six thirds, that's two electrons. So the, if they were equally distributed, we'd say two thirds of an electron each bond. Fair enough. The important thing is we have a triangle. We know what happens to triangles. Triangles get attacked in what fashion? Yes, backside attack. Which carbon gets attacked? Yes, the more substituted carbon. What's the result in terms of stereochemistry? Yes, opposite sides of the ring, anti. We do not compensate this arrow with an arrow that breaks a partial bond because arrows have very strict meanings. Arrows are two electrons moving. I hope you've caught on to that by now. If not, there it is, two electrons moving. If you showed this arrow, which I'm gonna erase almost instantly, uh, you're lying. That's not two electrons there. You can't pretend it is, don't do it. And I don't have a way of showing that all three of these partial bonds end up as a bond to mercury up here, a real bond. There's two electrons in this real bond. And I don't have a way of showing it. So I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to draw my intermediate here. Yeah, it's going to look a little backwards. We have to use our imagination a little bit. An O with two bonds to H is called an oxonium. Mercury's there. There it is. And now the question is, how do you neutralize that oxonium to make it into your final vicinal, vicinal uh, mercury hydrin? You can call it that. How do you do that? Last time, what base did we use to neutralize the oxonium? Let's go back. What base did we use to neutralize this oxonium right here? We used water. Why? Water was a better base. It had a lower pKb. Oh, pens off. Better base with a lower pKb. And it was everywhere, so there's more of it. Now, you have the more of it argument still going here, but you're using a base that is much poorer if you use water to go from here to here. And I don't like that. We're going to use acetate, which we made right here. I'm going to show an arrow. I'm going to redraw my acetate. I can use the short form if I want. I'll put a PKB node here. Acetate is the conjugate base of what acid? Eight ions come from ic acids. Acetic acid is what functional group with an OH here? Carboxylic acid, PKA5. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, you've got a PKB of nine and water PKB was 17. The difference is eight. That's 10 to the power of eight. A hundred million times more basic here than water is. To use water would be a tragic error. Showing you've forgotten the basics of acid base chemistry where stronger bases react before weaker bases. Acetate must be used. And that would give your side product here. You don't have to show me side products. 
But here it is, acetic acid. Acetic acid. Side product. And that is a good discussion to start us. But let's do a journal entry to finish this section. And we can even change uh, water to one of the other things for our journal entry if we want. H2O can be replaced by alcohols or carboxylic acids and see what happens. Uh, if it's water, you get an alcohol. If it's an alcohol to start with, I wonder what you get. We shall see. Here's our title. We'll do a journal entry. And we'll go with this one. And we'll react it with HG OAC OAC and use something simple like methanol, both the reactant and the solvent. And what happens is the mechanism is going to be identical. The more substituted carbon gets the O, it's not going to be an alcohol. It's going to be an OCH3. We have to use our imagination. I'll take you back to the previous page for that. And the mercury would be on the other carbon of the alkene. If one's a wedge, the other has to be a dash. And that's not an alcohol up there. That's an ether. This is a nice way to make ethers. Going back, let's verify we would get an ether. I would change uh, H2O, H2O to CH3OH. And we'd have the H bonded to the O like we do here. And that step would be the same. But instead of the second H, you have a CH3. You're not going to take off a CH3 group in an acid-base reaction, it's going to stay. So you'd have an OCH3 if you started with, instead of water, if you started with methanol. Okay. There's nothing different about this mechanism. So we can use this as a journal entry as well. And how does it start? Oh, let's, it's on the previous page. I don't know. Something about uh, mercury ionic compounds ionizing in water or other very polar solvents. And yeah, let's show that. Oh, we broke the bond from mercury to one of the O's and made the two ions, this ion and this ion. And if I'd drawn my mercury closer to my alkene, I wouldn't have had to redraw my alkene. So let's do that this time, huh? Let's break one of the bonds. Doesn't matter which one. Let's do this one this time. And you're going to make OAC minus. Going to need that lone pair later. And we also made our mercury. Looks like mercury is going to be green at the end. And OAC is attached down here. And don't forget, mercury used to share two electrons, and now that's like owning one, right? Sharing two is like owning one, and now it doesn't have any part of the one. It's a cation. It's a pyophile. That's what it is. It loves those pi electrons. And we're going to make a triangle. One arrow this time. We're going to get this. We're going to triangle where there used to be this bond is where the triangle is going to be. Remember, partial bonds all the way around, making a triangle to the mercury. And where's the plus charge? 
It's not on the mercury. It's not on the carbons. It's shared. It's not shared equally. One of those carbons helps out better with the carbocation, or if it's a carbocation, and it's this one. So if you want to draw that plus a little closer to that carbon, you'd be showing off, which is fine. But in the middle of the triangles where I need to see it. And then we're at the triangle stage. What happened previously when we got to the triangle stage? It was over here. What happened to our triangle? It got attacked by water. We don't have water. What's it going to be attacked by here? <gasps> Methanol. Methanol has lone pairs, just like water. Methanol will attack the more substituted carbon. Backside attack gives anti-stereoselectivity. And we're going to get this result here. Looks very similar to the product that's drawn. And O bond to H has a CH3. It's an oxonium, pKa negative 3. Mercury is done for the day here until we get rid of it. We haven't even learned how to do that yet. And what's going to take that H? What's the best base available? Don't say methanol. Methanol is the same kind of base as water is. You have a better choice here. Acetate. Oh, here's where we're going to have a little fun. I don't have to redraw acetate. It's going to swim on over here, roaming around the arrows, grabbing the H, neutralizing oxygen with a lone pair. And there you have the oxymercuration product. So we have two oxymercuration products that we made. I'm going to steal each one and show you how to get rid of the mercury. And here we go. We got this one. We got to get rid of the mercury and put it over here. Get rid of the extra stuff. And our earlier one. We're going to get rid of mercury. Demercuration is accomplished using sodium borohydride. That's, wow, that's fancy. I don't expect you to know what that looks like. And we got that one. And let's go back a couple pages. We had this species here. We have some extra stuff for that too. This guy right here. A lot of extra stuff. Might have been just as well served redrawing it, huh? Yeah, it's not too bad. How do we get rid of the mercury and replace it with, we're going to replace it with the simplest atom, hydrogen. So on the top one, I'll show you the whole story. Sodium listed first in a name where there's two words is an ionic compound. That's your old favorite Na plus. There must be an anion to go with that. Borohydride is a combination of boron and hydrogen so that the boron has a negative one formal charge. Boron is in group three on the periodic table. So when it has three bonds, it's neutral. Three bonds, it's neutral. It needs a fourth bond to have a negative charge. So you have that there and feel free and please do it this way on tests. If you had to provide this reagent, like that was a question, how do you go from here to here? And the 
answer is write this. So pretend it's a box. Although we don't have boxes anymore. You've got to do them on your loose leaf paper. That chemical. And you're saying, where did the dash go? Well, I no longer have a need for a dash here. This molecule does not even have a stereo center. Yes, propyl on the left and right. Mercury got replaced by an H. Uh, if you want to know the whole story, this is more information than I need. The mercury gets replaced with an H on the same position. And that's what you get there. And same story here. And this is not even a chiral molecule either. So I can draw OH. And, you know, if you're keeping score, the new H here, there's an old H on the same carbon, so we'd never know. You could even show the old H. And it's not a stereo center, so I don't need wedges or dashes. And that's a nice way to make alcohols. And I want to point out that was a Markovnikov alcohol. because the O is on the more substituted carbon. Remember, this used to be an alkene when we started the day. And the more substituted carbon's here. So if you can make an alcohol there, it's called a Markovnikov alcohol. We're not gonna call this bottom one a Markovnikov alcohol. We have to edit that. Markovnikov, that's not an alcohol. What is that over there? It is indeed an ether. So we have a reaction that can give us alcohols or ethers. And overall result, let's put the overall summary down here. So we know where we started and where we ended. In the top one, we started with this alkene here. Step one, we hit it with Hg two acetates and water. In step two, we hit it with NaBH4. So if you had a big question mark here, like what are you gonna make? The answer is you're gonna make what's drawn at the top of the page. Right there. And similarly, the alkene we started with to make the bottom ether was this alkene here. Similarly, we hit it with mercury 2 acetate. We didn't use water this time, we used methanol. And then we removed the mercury with sodium borohydride. And the good news is you don't even need to know that mechanism just know the chemical, know what formula it has and what it does. It replaces the mercury with an H and you don't have to show me H's in stick figures. So your answer be this. And that there is oxymercuration in step one followed by demercuration in step two. And that is a nice place to close for this segment and then we'll finish the day with what's called hydroboration and oxidation. It's our biggest mechanism of the semester so we're going to spend a good amount of time on it. It'll be a long segment coming up. So I will see you very soon.